So moving ahead with the topic, we'll be now continuing with lacerations. We've done abrasion, we've done contusion and bruise. So this is the third that we'll be discussing that is laceration. It is a breach in the continuity of tissues involving the depth more than the covering epithelium of the skin or organ. Over here itself, we can see all the differentiating features between abrasion, contusion, bruise and a laceration. A breach in the continuity of the tissues. So, this is completely opposite to contusion. There was no breach in the continuity of tissue. Involving the depth, there was no depth involvement in abrasion more than the covering epithelium of the skin or organ. The edges, now the edges of a lacerated wound, they will be ragged, irregular and they may be contused also. The margins may be abraded. So basically a laceration, if we can appreciate it in the definition that it is a breach in the continuity of the tissues involving the depth more than the covering epithelium is different from abrasion and contusion but the edges of this lacerated wound show contusion and the margins show abrasion. From surgery we can thank surgery because now we know the difference between edges and margins. So deeper tissues are unevenly divided. They will be crushing of the hair balls and blood vessels and tissue bridging or tissue tags may be present. This is the example. Uh, this is an example of a lacerated wound and this is a diagrammatic representation. So we can see the margins, bruised margins or contused margins. We can see the nerve bridges that is there is uneven division of the underlying vessels and nerves, there are crushed vessels, crushed hair bulbs, irregular edges and these tissue bridges that are present. So this is a characteristic definition of a lacerated wound. Now talking about different types of lacerations, split or incised looking, please pay attention, it is incised looking, abrasion, contusion and laceration are caused because of blood force trauma. But if a laceration is split or incised looking laceration, why? Why does it happen? Because of perpendicular force applied between two hard surfaces. Now avulsed laceration or flaying, the term is flaying laceration is the application of a grinding force. It is a grinding force that is being applied. Stretch laceration, the third one, it is due to tangential force over the skin exceeding the elastic, elasticity threshold of the skin. So hence it tears, there is a stretch and it tears the skin. Finally a tear, it is impact with irregular object. So these are the four types of laceration, split or incised looking. That is the margins and the edges may look like that it has been because the application of a sharp weapon but it is not so. We need to do pay a closer visit to it. Evulsed or flaying because of the application of a grinding force. Because of a tangential force, they can be stretch laceration where the elasticity of the skin is tested. Tear is impact with an irregular object. So talking in detail about the split or incised looking laceration. This is one. It now at first instance gives us a glance that it is because of a sharp weapon but it is not so. It is a lacerated wound. Why do I say? Can you see the contused and the abraded margins and edges? Can you see the irregularity in the depth of the injury? So yes, it is definitely, it is incised looking but it is not because of a sharp weapon. It is a lacerated wound caused by a blunt weapon. These are most commonly encountered in casualties where we need to have an extra careful eye because I will tell you the reason if the weapon is sharp like a knife, so it all comes under assault. But if a person has sustained a fall and, and the object is blunt, so it is can be a self fall if it is and we wrongly label the injury as incised injury. So the matter or the game altogether changes. Hence we all need to be aware that there can be an incised looking laceration. The most important thing to remember is the causative weapon. The moment we say incised, the moment we say laceration, this becomes a sharp force injury, this becomes a blunt weapon injury. 
so we need to be extra extra careful over here a laceration of the forehead extending through the full thickness of the scalp with irregular macerated edges as discussed impact from a length of wood this was basically a case in which with the wood a wooden stick it was a impact a wells laceration of flaying laceration like i said there is a flay a flap of skin that is present over here it is a lacerated wound because of this avulsed or flying application of force stretch laceration where the elasticity threshold of the skin was being tested elasticity breaks down of the skin it causes a stretch laceration the picture shows a laceration of the scalp in a laborer working in a garment factory her hair got tangled with a rotating wheel resulting in over stretching of the scalp so because of this force there was over stretching of the scalp this kind of a stretch laceration has taken place we can appreciate the margins irregular contused and abraded over here mildly the hair balls must be crushed i am not sure if it is it is appreciable in this photograph but yes the underlying hair bulb will be crushed medical legal importance of laceration so it the probable type of weapon used can be talked about yes the time since injury cannot be estimated in lacerations there is no definite pattern of healing in a lacerated wound it depends on the site it depends on the age it depends on the immunity of the person there are various factors which govern the healing in a case of laceration so the time since injury that we were discussing in abrasion and contusion is missing in laceration split laceration can be confused with incised wound i cannot stress this enough now uh moving on to questions so which of the following has only length and breadth i have been saying definitely a, a stab wound has depth a contusion has length and breadth definitely but only length and breadth no it is underlying so it does have depth abrasion yes that's the correct answer it is a two dimensional injury where there is length and breadth and no depth lacerated wound again lacerated wound has a depth so the answer to the question of which of the following has only length and breadth the only two dimensional injury in the given options is abrasion and anti mortem abrasion is so these are the types of questions in which we are very eager to answer most likely we will answer yellowish and translucent because we were looking for that word but we'll miss anti mortem these are the features of post mortem abrasion so while talking about this slide i had emphasized on the words yellow translucent and parchmentized in a post mortem abrasion in a post mortem abrasion so the answer of anti mortem abrasion is seen of the bony prominence no that is post mortem abrasion bright reddish brown in color yes it is scab is slightly depressed no such thing so the answer to this question in anti mortem abrasion is bright reddish brown in color very easy to answer once we are going with the slides but a little bit of tricky once we do not have that much of level of focus and consciousness when we do a question so generally we just jump to options we don't realize sometimes a question can be as easy as this blue color of the bruise is due to deoxyhemoglobin we've discussed bilirubin hematoidin and hemosiderin are the different spectrums of color in a bruise where we start with red we go with blue and we move on to green and yellow sometimes in some cases from green to normal skin is direct yellow is missing also in subconjunctival hemorrhage in meningeal hemorrhages this color progression is not present a blue of moderate violence may produce a comparatively small bruise if yes now this is a good question the blow is of moderate violence yani the force is applied truly applied it is producing a small bruise why it can be the tissues are loose no the tissues contain firm fibrous tissue and hence the underlying collection of the capillary blood is not evident the tissues are overlying bone no the patient is anemic again no not a good answer i will also talk about over here that why is abrasion more 
important as an injury to a forensic medicines expert or to casualty experts than bruise. Why? Why do we say that an abrasion gives us more accurate medical legal information as compared to bruise? The answer is number one over here. The force was much but still the, the area of the bruise was not so. So if we say that a bruise of 9 into 3 centimeter is present over so and so area, it does not correspond to the offending weapon. It does not. So this does not become important whereas it is so an abrasion. We had based on the area that was causing the abrasion, whether it was a small area, small rough surface or a broad rough surface, accordingly the type of abrasion was being formed. Secondly, a bruise might be a migratory or ectopic in nature. This was the first one. Second one, ectopic bruise or migratory bruise does not give a good information. That is the injury took place at point A and the bruise is appreciable at point B. So again, the medical legal importance is lost over here. It is not so. The site of injury is the site of force applied to cause this injury. Next, direction of force. Like in abrasion, it talked about the direction of force is completely evident by the heaping or the collection of the epidermal tissue. It is not so in bruise. There is no heaping, there is no collection towards one end. So direction of force can also not be commented upon. So these are some of the points in which abrasion injury becomes way more important than a bruise injury. I like to take a break over here, then we'll continue further.